Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Mervyn Matthew. Thank you for joining us. Coming up, the Prime Minister's Special Advisor discusses government's concern for the elderly. Dominica to source over 50 million US dollars to respond to damage caused by disasters in the eastern part of the country. And the advancement of the OECS Economic Union discussed at the 57th meeting of the OECS Authority in Antigua. Stay with us for details of these and other stories right after the break. The facts as they are brought to you every day, every day, every day, every day. only on GIS Channel 7. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. The government of Dominica plans to source over 50 million U.S. dollars in loans and grants to respond to damage caused by natural disasters on the eastern coast of the island. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt told a meeting called by the National Emergency Planning Organization last week that his government is in the process of sourcing funds from partners such as the European Union and the World Bank. The Prime Minister said these funds will be used to construct new roadways, river defenses, bridges, and retaining walls. We're going to be contracting a loan from the World Bank. Uh, we have not confirmed it yet, but we, we, we're looking at it of, 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 a, of a very huge sum uh, to, to, to address the issues on the, on the um, East Coast. We've, we've gotten a grant from the European Union uh, to, to put to that, and we're also looking at a third source um, to ensure that we can address the, the situation um, of the en entire east coast of Dominica in terms of um, new roadways and, and retaining walls and river defenses, um, bridges. Um, you're talking about the whole work, so you're talking about a world in excess of 52 million US dollars. The country's leader says Dominica is being viewed by the world as a model country in the manner in which it bounces back following natural disasters. Much of this, he says, can be attributed to the swift financial assistance granted to the island by friendly governments. He says, however, that due to the financial situation now experienced by countries worldwide, it is especially important for Dominica to do all it can to minimize the impact of natural disasters. Of course, um one has to recognize that we are operating in a uh, very difficult uh, global economic and fiscal um, period. And therefore, whatever we can do to minimize on the damage done by disasters, we all have a moral, and, uh, moral obligation uh, to do that uh, because we're spending a lot of money to respond to disasters. Last year, Dominica was impacted by four weather systems. The government of Dominica remains committed to the development of the island's youth. That assurance has come from Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, Honorable Justina Charles. The minister in her address at the 40th graduation ceremony of the Youth Skills Training Program last week explained that the current administration has taken action to ensure that young people on the island are educated and are equipped with specialized skills. In addition to academic opportunities, government continues to provide op opportunities for skills development, youth entrepreneurship, and other related measures geared towards achieving full and productive youth employment that will ultimately contribute to alleviating poverty. This is done through the Youth Skills Training Program, the Dominica Youth Business Trust, the Small Business Support Unit, and the Agricultural Investment Unit. These programs provide opportunities for you young people to gain some means of employment, whether through your own business venture or by working with someone. Meantime, Acting Chief Youth Development Officer John Roach says the Youth Development Division's officers continue to focus on preparing you for the regional and international job markets. Earlier this month, the division held a curriculum development workshop with local instructors and technical personnel from the Education Enhancement Unit and the Dominica State College to develop curricula for nine modules. These include sewing, auto mechanic, construction, woodwork, plumbing, computer maintenance, electrical wiring, aqua welding, and hospitality arts. 
the Curriculum Development Initiative focuses on the Caribbean vocational qualifications and the process will continue until every module of the Youth Skills Training Program has a curriculum that is keeping with the CBQ standards. In the coming months, training in sewing will be undertaken in the South and auto body repairs in the Southeast. These modules will have a strong slant towards individual and group enterprise development. A new module in small engine repair in Roseau, with concentration on motorcycle engines, is also being highly considered. We invite young people to take advantage of these opportunities. Over 150 young people recently completed training in several modules including computer literacy, building maintenance, furniture repair and arc welding. A Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Scarrett joined other heads of government of the OECS and the national delegations for the 57th meeting of the OECS Authority in Antigua this week. The authority, which comprises Prime Ministers and the Chief Ministers, is a chief policy-making body in the sub-regional grouping. At the opening session on Sunday, outgoing OECS Chairman and Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, transferred the chairmanship to Antigua's Prime Minister, Dr. Baldwin Spencer. The meeting, which ended on Tuesday, sought primarily to discuss the advancement of the OECS Economic Union. The business sessions included discussion on the financial landscape and the OECS development strategy and work programs and budgets of, of the organs of the OECS were also examined. The OECS heads planned ways of engaging the private sector in partnership for growth and development. Prime Minister Skerritt is expected back on the island later this week. The government's interest in the care of the island's elderly is plainly demonstrated through its policy decisions and annual subventions to the Dominica Council on Aging. Special Advisor to the Dominica's Prime Minister, Edward Lambert, spoke on Honorable Skerritt's behalf at the DCOA's annual general meeting held last week. Lambert says in the wake of the global recession, the government's response is to craft a social protection policy that supports the poor and vulnerable and buffers retirees from economic pressure. Since the onset of the recession in 2008, says Lambert, the security of lifetime jobs and the delivery of free health care are no longer assured. Also, a rise in migration has led to the abandonment of many elderly persons. In that vein, Lambert highlighted government's initiatives to ameliorate these situations. Government has thus increased welfare payments, removed taxes on pensions, introduced the Yes We Care program, agreed to more regular increases in benefits under the Social Security Scheme, commensurate with the rate of inflation, introduced the option for those reaching the retirement age of 60 to be re-employed up to age 65. This option gives explicit expression to your theme for this annual general meeting. Government has also allowed for the provision of free cooking gas to all centenarians and improved the housing conditions of those elderly in dire need. The advisor also informed the nation's senior citizens of government's endeavors to rectify the lack of social security benefits for returnees and retirees who have lived long and worked in the United Kingdom. Efforts are also being made by the Labour Party government to review and possibly pattern on similar arrangements of other Caribbean islands where this concern has already been satisfactorily addressed. This group of our citizens find themselves disadvantaged in that they are denied the benefit of increases in their pensions since they are no longer resident in the United Kingdom. This matter is being addressed by examining agreements of the United Kingdom with Barbados and Jamaica, whose retirees are not denied these benefits. The next step will be to approach the government of the United Kingdom on this. At the last executive meeting of the DCOA with the Cabinet, the Prime Minister indicated his intentions to devise a program for which self-employed persons such as fisherfolk and farmers who do not draw benefits from Social Security can profit from some other form of economic reimbursement. 
Lama stated the government wishes to move speedily with this plan to provide the senior citizens with a social safety net, permitting them to live fruitful lives without slipping into poverty. In addressing the theme of the meeting, Aging, a fountain of national human resource capacity, Lambert encouraged the DCOA to document the knowledge and experience of its members and to make this information available to various organizations, including government. Government from time to time in trying to find members to serve on various boards and wanting to pursue a policy of getting a mix of experience and youth on those boards is often really looking far and searching deep to find out where are the experienced persons who can serve. I say this to you in order to encourage you to perhaps think of developing a database of the skills and knowledge of your members and make that database available to various agencies, including government, so that when specific skills and experiences are being sought in staffing boards and in providing advisory services, you would be readily identifiable. This was the DCOA's 19th anniversary meeting. And the Ministry of Culture and Youth Affairs sees the Dominica Institute for the Arts, or DIFA, as a first step into the introduction of the arts into local education curriculums. Speaking at the end of year's ceremony of the Institute, Culture and Youth Affairs Minister, Honorable Justina Charles, named DIFA a vital part of the national cultural development strategy. I also want to thank the private sector institutions and others who've made financial and contribution in kind to the Institute over the past year. This is in keeping with the spirit of partnership for national development. I encourage you to continue to support the Institute in the years ahead. This is another way of contributing to the development of the nation's youth. A Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence in his remarks at that event stated that the successful completion of the Institute was the first step in making DIFA an important national and regional institution. Ladies and gentlemen, the first year of operation of the Institute is a first step towards making this institution become an important national and regional institution. We will need the continued support of all governments, private sector and individuals, and we are appealing for your assistance. The Culture Minister believes the Institute has aided in consolidating the training program organized by the Division of Culture. Government has adopted and articulated a policy position aimed at strengthening the roles of arts in formal education. In practice, this requires art training for teachers, among other things. During the past year, the Institute has helped in this regard by carrying out training for school teachers in dance. I encourage more teachers to take advantage of the programs being offered by the Institute. Honorable Charles affirmed that the courses taught at the Dominica Institute for the Arts will help to perpetuate Dominica's heritage. And finally, this news time, a combination of an enhanced West African monsoon, warmer Atlantic Ocean temperatures, and the absence of El Nino are the primary factors behind the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's 2013 Atlantic hurricane season outlook. The NOAA 2013 Atlantic hurricane outlook is predicting 13 to 20 named storms, 7 to 11 hurricanes, and 3 to 6 major hurricanes. The NOAA is reporting that the probability of multiple hurricane strikes increases for both the United States and the entire region around the Caribbean Sea. In explaining the science behind this year's outlook, scientists disclosed that signs of an active season this year include warm water in the Atlantic Ocean, a strong West African monsoon, and less than normal rainfall in the Amazon basin. This was revealed by Jerry Bell of the Climate Prediction Center during a slide presentation at a meeting called by the National Emergency Planning Organization last week. A substantial body of climate research has shown that a stronger West African monsoon combined with warmer Atlantic waters are the main factors contributing to this high activity era. 
the monsoon season in Western Africa has been stronger and wetter than it was between 1971 and 1994. The West African monsoon often gives rise to the thunderstorms that eventually become hurricanes. Those storms are more likely to strengthen and become tropical storms and hurricanes when the Atlantic Ocean waters are warmer. Water temperatures throughout the Atlantic hurricane region have been warmer than average during the past 18 years. In contrast, Atlantic Ocean temperatures were cooler during the low activity era before 1995. For this upcoming hurricane season, NOAA's most sophisticated climate model predicts the Atlantic to be warmer than average again this year. That model also predicts the Pacific to have cooler water, so El Nino is not expected to form. Typically, El Nino acts to reduce the Atlantic hurricane season. Weather officials say the outlook for this year is typical of the active hurricane seasons we've been seeing since 1995. The number of hurricanes, major hurricanes has more than doubled since 1995, they confirmed. The scientists also said that in this current high activity era, the number of hurricanes has increased by 60% compared to the 1971 to 1994 period. The 2012 Atlantic hurricane season was marked by above average top tropical cyclone activity with the formation of 19 tropical storms, of which 10 became hurricanes. And that's the English news. Mark Wilson St. Louis joins us next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moins, c'est Mark Wilson St. Louis. Premièrement, le ministre de l'Agriculture a mis en place pour contrôler Black Sigur Toka. Par le salaire, il a sorti de l'officier quarantine vers un ensemble. Ansem Kawan m'a créé à ses habitants pour assister le ministre de la Goumé et puis détruire le mauvais malade de Black Sigatoka vini Dominic. Eh bien, ça nous a fait, nous a mis le programme en place. Eh bien, nous avons un programme ça qui travaille. Mais nous, nous, nous travaillons pour faire toujours. Eh bien, nous avons dit que c'est planté pour travailler avec nous. Eh bien, nous avons spray um, des cycles chimiques, eh bien, banque qui était tilt. Et nous avons fait un chemical, nous avons fait tout de suite qui, qui nous avons volé. Et bien, nous avons spray toute um, banane et figue. Et nous avons dit que c'est planté et pas seulement spray. Spray a été aidé contre les maladies. Mais ce qui a travaillé bien, c'est qu'on a coupé ces feuilles qui affectent les Black Cigatouka. So nous les dit c'est planté pour aller en le en le en le en le en le um, filio et ve garder feuille là faire ça tous les semaines garder feuille là et ve couper feuille là qui ni maladie et ve mettre ça à terre ve nous garder tourner tourner tourne feuille là mettre en um, feuille la tête en bas en le en le terre et ve ça même qui ende Uh, on malagou mais contre maladie si vous tuez toute maladie fig en um, fait là il calait un des de contre les maladies et ben nous les dit moun pour faire travail ça là parce que travail ça qu'a travail en matnik il qu'a travail en Cuba il qu'a travail en tout pays qui qu'a fait et ben nous les c'est planté à faire ça à Dominique Pendant la nouvelle, Dominique a permis 9 pays Kawaii qui a bénéficié de loan de 3 millions de dollars qui la People's Republic of China a financé. Par le salaire, il a sorti le premier ministre, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. Pendant qu'il a permis le chef gouvernement Kawaii qui a joué le président de la Chine, Xi Jinping, en Trinidad. C'est le premier ministre Skerritt. Trois Dominique qui a dépensé pour l'infrastructure, c'est-à-dire les bagages consommés et les ponts, et puis il a aussi joué en qui manière. Et les banques sont tapées pour que ça puisse être le secteur privé en Dominique. Le Premier ministre Skerritt, ensemble et puis l'ambassadeur Dominique pour OECS, His Excellency Félix Grégoire, aussi attendait un grand meeting OECS qui prend place en Antigue. En la nouvelle, le ministre de l'Agriculture a avisé les habitants pour protéger les plants AIO, pour tuer les hôtes, pour ne pas affecter les maladies de citrus greening disease. Pendant que vous transportez à cette occasion, Parole Salah a sorti de l'Office de certification du ministre de l'Agriculture, M. Joseph Blankford. Blankford a aussi fait parole que le ministre de l'Agriculture 
pas que vendre plan par habitant ou là l'occasion à yo affecter les yo ka vini et que bon si yo tapé au au habiter pour couvrir eh, ces plats là parce que ce yo ka passé à village là à place là qui ni vecteur il ça volé à ce plat là et ben yo ça mené monter bon place yo aussi nous ne nous pas vendre pièces plat pour nous pas vendre pièces plat pour femmes femmes qui ni Maladie à place, vous ne pouvez pas contrôler les maladies. Parce que si vous menez le plat, vous avez plat tout neuf, vous avez ou j'ai une maladie, ou vous avez gaspillé l'argent. Parce que c'est plat là qui est aussi. Comme vous avez dit, vous avez plus de régiments pour ces maladies. Donc, so, si nous ne pas éradiquer tous ces vecteurs, tous ces symptômes, là, avec tous ces inoculants à place, il ne pas faire pièce à ce qui va être plat là-bas. Après, il y a tous ces plats-là, il y a des plats qui sont plus bas, parce que ça, il y a des plats pour produire ces plats-là. Après, il y a des plats 10 dollars par plat, mais il y a des plats 20 dollars pour produire ces plats-là. Donc, ces plats-là sont subsidés pour ces plats-là. Et bien, finalement, Trois National, White ou Kouboulé, déclaré qu'on a l'occasion avec le tourisme. Parole ça la sortie de l'ordre manager opération Trois National White Kouboulin, Mademoiselle Roselyne Paul. Trois White Kouboulin National Trails, il déclare qu'on a um, un écotourisme site. Uh, à manière ça la, il y a le gouvernement, l'autorité pour le um, contrôle, pour, pour faire ce que nous avons protégé Trois là. Um, c'est quelque chose qui c'est en trois en produit qui national en produit qui ça nous et qui um, est facilité aussi pour nous ça dit moun qui a visité um, moun qui pas resté dominic mais voulait expérimenter trois là yo ça payé um, en 12 dollars 40 dollars pour yo expérimenter mais ça que oué de dominic pour ça maintenir Mesdames et Messieurs, ça c'est tout pour nos belles en créole pour à présent. Non moins, c'est McPherson Saint Louis. Au revoir. Scary. Everything just shaking and shaking and making big creaky noises. Earthquakes, big and small, take place in the Caribbean at least 10 times a year. The dishes rattling and falling and breaking, then Vonna started to scream. All I could think to do was shout, "Get outside! Get out!" Earthquakes. Hazards. Take control. Reduce your loss. If an earthquake hits, what can you do? Get down. Get under an item of furniture like a table. Hold on and stay there until the quake passes. Find out lots more about earthquakes and other hazards at your local disaster office. A message from your national disaster office and Sidera. And that's all for National Focus today. We welcome your suggestions and comments. Feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Moving Matthew. Thank you for watching.